I've been busy lately. I love Baldur's Gate so much. And as soon as this game came out, I had people asking me to cosplay from it. Um, a lot of Shadowheart requests, a lot of Carlac requests, and even a couple people asking me to cosplay Astarian, which I did. By the way, do you like my jumpsuit? <laughs> yeah, I'm a basic Astarian girly. This video isn't about him though. It's about who I finally decided to cosplay from this game. Everyone's favorite murder princess, daughter of Ball, Balls. the shapeshifter, or in the red. The plan for this costume is to have a full fabric bodysuit painted with the smoky effect she has, and then covered in EVA foam that will be glued directly to the bodysuit and painted red with like a glossy top coat to mimic that wet flesh suit. Plus, all that EVA foam will have a bunch of foam clay details and like carved details to give it tons of texture. I also have to make a bunch of silicone molds for the metal shapes that are repeated throughout the whole costume and an absolutely gigantic wig. Then of course, her netherstone dagger bloodthirst. The goal is to make this for Holiday Matsuri, which is a convention happening right before Christmas time. And it is currently November 8th. So, yeah. I've already got most of what I need to begin crafting. So let's just start with the wig. Here is Orin's wig. This is the Arwen Classic from Art of Wigs. Actually, this isn't quite right. So I'm just gonna, whoop. And that's a little better. Orin's wig has two major problems I need to solve, the length and tangling. I've made a little diagram to help because it does get confusing. The plan is to dye some quilt batting to match the wig. Sew it onto the underside of the wig cap in three long sections. Then I harvest wefts from a second long wig in the same shade and glue those wefts onto my strips of quilt batting to make it longer. Then glue the original wig's hair down to cover the tops of the wefts. These three long chunks are going to get braid shields, AKA some tulle fabric that's been dyed to match, sewn into a tube and then covering each chunk. That way, this hair won't get tangled in all the bits and bobs in Orin's outfit. With the shields attached and glued at the base of the wig, I can finally style this thing together and weave the wig into a braid. Does that make sense? I don't know. Let's do it. I think I know what I'm doing. Alright. Gonna do it. <laughs> Phase one, the setup. Let's dye the quilt batting and tool to match the wig hair. Before you say anything, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> That's purple, you stupid bitch. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not actually that mad about it, and I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna use the purple batting, because I just didn't want white as my base. I wanted like anything but white, and I think this is gonna get covered up enough that you really aren't gonna be able to tell that it's purple underneath. Um, the tool came out a great like grayish color though. I'm stoked about this. All right, now I just gotta let these dry. Um, we're gonna trust the process here. <laughs> this poor back of wig got scalped, um, but she will be dying for a good cause. I can now use all of her wefts and all of this should be enough. Listen, I know the purple doesn't look right, but we're trusting the process, remember? I'm sewing on the quilt batting to the wig cap by hand. I've left one layer of wig hair at the very bottom to help cover up that purple fabric. Now the wefts that I collected after scalping the other poor wig are getting hot glued onto my purple quilt batting, and it makes this braid much longer. I start from the bottom and work my way up. I made sure to evenly distribute these extra wefts, trying to keep each braid section evenly covered and trying not to run out of all my extra wig hair. The wefts of the second wig are still visible, but you can see all of the hair from the original wig is pinned up right now, and that will get glued down to cover these wefts. I'm using Uhu glue, a little silicone spatula, and alligator clips to keep these braid sections in place. So the three sections for my braid have all been gathered up here, and I left a bunch of hair at the front of the wig not added to the braid, so that way I can shape the face firming bangs later. But before I can braid this together, 
I'm going to be adding these shields and you can see it's mostly sheer fabric that'll get smushed up here and then glued right down to the wig. Okay, interesting. How do I... Okay, I keep trying to put this on and it gets super tangled, so I'm going to try something else. The solution might just be way more hair ties. We'll see. <laughs> I pictured this part going really smoothly in my head. So when it didn't, I just kind of sat there <laughs> in shock and wondered where I went wrong in my life. I'm struggling here. It took a couple of tries, but I did manage to slide up the tool fabric all at once, then unravel it downwards so that it wouldn't tangle in my braid sections. Hot glue fixed the braid shields right to the base of this wig. Okay, okay, that's not so bad. As you can see, this is a little messy. Uh, I'm really hoping braiding it and then adding the bangs will help clean it up. Now the nice long strand is in its shield and it's not super tangled. And then once all three of these shields are on, I can actually braid this together. And you can barely see the braid shields on this wig, even when standing pretty close. Except for all the big ugly chunks of hot glue, <laughs> whoops. I should have just been more careful. If you do have a long braided or a ponytail wig or a pigtail wig, this is a great method to prevent it from tangling throughout a convention day. I used more hot glue to keep this braid even more secure. You'll also notice that I didn't crimp this wig, even though I normally do that to all my cosplay wigs. But Baldur's Gate's art direction has a realistic style and the crimped look really only works for anime and cartoony style characters. And so I left this hair long and straight so Orin would look more realistic. As you can see, this part of the braid where it all comes together is pretty darn ugly, but that is what these bang pieces are for. They are gonna be wrapped around and used to cover that, and then we'll get tucked in between these braid chunks, and then also glued down. And then once they're tucked in there, they're gonna be super long, so I'm probably gonna actually cut them and then glue them down on the underside of the braid so you don't see it. Orange bangs are meant to be kind of loose and dangly, but it would be too easy to accidentally rip them out of their styling. And that's why I've soaked them pretty thoroughly in hairspray and more glue. And then I heated them into shape. This helps maintain a fake loose style when in reality the bangs are very stiff. After finishing the styling, I ended up not being entirely happy with how the front looked, and I later went in and added even more of those leftover wefts, but this time to the front of the hairline, so that there'd be more long, dangly, loose hanging bangs. Okay, this wig is so, so heavy. Um, you can see how much my forehead is showing because it's just dragging back. So I'm definitely gonna need to sew in some like extra clips. But I do think that overall, mm, well in this lighting it looks very blonde. It, overall the styling turned out pretty good. And it's nice and long. I really like the hair all going back into the braid right there. I think it looks pretty good. The next step for this wig is to make the crown pieces and all the little metal details that go along the braid and also sew in those clips that I mentioned so that it's not so freaking heavy. And then the bottom of this wig also has a big, like, metal piece. It looks like a mace, which I'm also realizing will make this wig even heavier. So, oh my god, the five head's killing me. <laughs> so the wig is done, and as you can see, I actually added more, like, face framing danglies that I need to style back, but otherwise, it's complete. And the next step is going to be all of the shit that's on Orin's head. Um, and I have to be very considerate about what I make that out of because the wig itself is already very heavy. Ideally, I would like all the head pieces to be made out of foam clay because it's super lightweight. 
I'm also thinking about making silicone molds for all the repeating pieces in Oren's outfit. I did get to test one new material that I will be using for all of the gems that are in Oren's little headpiece. And I tried UV resin for the first time. And I'm super stoked with how these look. So now that I've got these resin pieces finished, I think I want to pattern out the rest of those complicated shapes. She's got like this crown made out of like intricate metal pieces all puzzled together. And then there's this dude who's just sleeping up there. <laughs> all right, let's try to craft. I think cling wrap might be the cosplayer's best friend. It is so useful in so many facets of cosplay. I put cling wrap over this wig head in order to protect it and attach the tape and that I can sketch out the pattern for Orin's crown. I had a render of Orin up to reference this crown, but because all these little pieces are very confusing, the most helpful reference ended up being an Etsy listing for the 3D print of this crown. And it showed all the pieces broken up individually. So if you don't want to make this thing from scratch, you can get it 3D printed. Each little flat piece is cut out of Warbla as a base because it's much flatter and crisper than 2mm EVA foam. I can still use foam clay to sculpt the details of these pieces right on top of the Warbla though. Hopefully this keeps this crown light since the wig itself is already so heavy. <laughs> However, I did make the centerpiece of this crown entirely out of Warbla. The details are so small and multiple of these pieces do require some structure for them to stand up and Warbla is great for that. The crown is connected by little chains and jump rings and I can insert those easily into heated Warbla. It's soft and pliable when warm and I can poke a hole right through it. Then once it cools down, it becomes stiff and sturdy again. Now I am getting into sculpting this sleepy little man sitting on Oren's head. Let's call him Steve. This is the first time I've sculpted a human shape like this. I just heated up more Warbla and rolled it in tubes, trying to make his limbs. I think ideally I would have liked to have a little 3D printed Steve, because then I could actually give him features on his sleepy face. But Warbla isn't that easy to sculpt tiny details into. Everyone say hi to Steve. All these little crown details are done. And I am moving onto her hair flail. <laughs> Do you actually think she hits people with this? Probably not, but it is a sleigh. A slayer. Ah! <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm sorry, I won't do that again. This weird shape was hard to dissect, but with anything like this, I just try to break it up into recognizable shapes and trying to understand where they connect. This flail is just a really fancy box. So I broke it up into four corners and four sides and made all those little pieces. Many of these foam edges were dremeled to make a pointed edge. Then I got into building this flail with patience and contact cement. And the last little details were sculpted with more foam clay. I finished all of the pieces of her crown. I also finished the little th flail thing that goes on the bottom of her braid. And then there are a bunch of little trinkets woven throughout her hair that are just gonna get glued right in. But they're like repeating patterns. It's the same shape over and over again. And I don't wanna have to just make the same shape a bunch and try to make it look uniform when instead I could do like a mold out of silicone and then just make a little resin piece every time. So I made these master shapes out of Warbla and I'm going to cast them in silicone and then they'll be my mold so I can make the shape a bunch. This tiny little one's in the hair a ton. I think this is in the hair a little bit but it's mostly on her belt. And then these pieces are also on her belt a couple of times. And I will be trying to make the pieces out of UV resin so they're super fast to cure. I think there's only like three weeks until holiday Matsuri and I haven't actually started at all on the base of the costume. <laughs>
<laughs> um, I'm not that helpful that I'll finish in time, but it would be cool if I did. This was my first time ever working with silicone. I think a lot of folks use sheets of plastic or even Legos to build their mold boxes, but the only thing I had on hand was cardboard. It's too porous to be a proper mold since the silicone would just soak right through, so I coated every face of this cardboard box with packing tape. Then my box was glued together with copious amounts of hot glue, and I just prayed to the cosplay gods that it wouldn't leak everywhere. Of course I dropped the lid right in to my silicone and didn't even make enough for the first pour. But despite the issues, the mold worked. Scissoring. My spouse is watching in amazement right now. Yeah, the piece came out Great. without any issue. Fucking A. Okay. There he is. I dove right into filling these molds with UV resin and blasting them with my little UV flashlight. It's supposed to cure in just a couple of minutes, unlike other resins, which can take hours or even days. Okay, it's been a couple days since I made that silicone mold and I have been making resin pieces. Um, this little piece turns out great pretty much every time. And I have made Quite a few of them. <laughs> oh, shit. However, the shape that I need the most of is working the least. Every time I've tried to make it, it comes out with bubbles or like half filled. Oh. Not a single one that I've tried has actually turned out solid. And I think I need like at least 60 of this little shape. It's in her hair and it's on her belt. So with the resin not working, I tried another technique. Um, this is foam clay, and I can already tell it's not gonna work. It has taken three days for this to dry. And if I need 50 to 60 pieces, you can do the math. <laughs> I simply do not have time for that. Actually, let's pull it out now. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Whoa. Oh, come on. Yeah, so obviously this didn't work. <laughs> Um, the whole point of getting the UV resin is that once you put this lamp on it, it cures in just a couple minutes so I could have like bust these pieces out, you know? But now I think the only solution I can think of is to just make these by hand. Also like this big piece wasn't coming out in the resin either, and so I tried the foam. Probably just gonna end up making these out of Warbler in the end as well. Alright, I'm gonna go wash this out and start fucking plugging away at making a bunch of these. I'm like really struggling to get started on the big stuff, like her actual bodysuit and all of those like flesh pieces. I don't know why I'm so scared of it. I just don't want to work on it. I'm glad I made a silicone mold though, because like this is definitely going to be useful in future projects, especially if I'm making like tiny little pieces like this. Um, it's super fast and super easy. Okay. <laughs> With the silicone mold being sort of a bust. I decided not to waste any more time and I made 60 little round shapes out of foam by hand. Most of these actually go in the belt and not the crown that I'm working on, but I might as well get them all done at once. You can even see the warbler ones I've already made in the background. Drawing and cutting and heating up all these little pieces was murder on my hands, which I suppose is only fitting for the chosen princess for the god of murder. I can't just use these little round pieces as they are though, they are super flat and I need to add more details. I'm gonna be doing that with this metal carving tool and my heat gun. I just get it nice and warm and then press a divot into it for more depth. And then I do that 60 more times. So it's February now. Katsukon is in about two weeks. I haven't really worked on Orin at all since uh, November. And now I'm gonna try to finish the rest of it before Katsukon. I made about 30 of this little shape. I made 60 
of these, I've also been using my silicone mold to make a bunch of these little guys. And these go both on the belt and in Orin's wig too. I think I want to finish up all those little pieces on the wig and the belt. Then I'm just going to jump right into patterning her flesh suit. I have a new mic coming in the mail that I can use while filming on my phone and hopefully I'll sound a lot better the next time you see me. Here we are post time skip. It's Orin Cosplay Shippuden now. So all of these little pieces have been primed with Plasti Dip and I'm going to paint them silver with Rub and Buff instead of spray paint. I like the final look of Rub and Buff for pieces that are meant to be a little grungy because the wax doesn't get into the cracks and corners and they stay black. It adds so much depth and variation in the color and looks a little bit more like medieval style metal. The resin gems I made ages ago are attached to the warbler with UV resin instead of glue so that I'm certain it really stays on there. I wanted these pieces to look even more grungy and dark so they got a dark wash painted on. It's just watered down black metallic paint. Orin spooky and she lives in the sewers. Her pieces aren't going to be clean. I can make this as weird and gross and grungy as I want. Everything is done and it's finally time to attach them to the wig. I've decided to make this crown attached to the wig permanently. And once again, this is to prevent tangling. If it's a separate piece that I wear, it could get caught in the wig too easily every time I take it off and put it back on. There are little metal rings attached to the underside of some pieces and those will have silver chain attachments later. Do be careful putting hot glue in a wig because once it's in there, it is never coming out. I had to really make sure these pieces were sitting exactly where I wanted them. So, so pleased with how this wig and this crown came out. I love the braid, I love the braid shield, I love the weird little flail, I especially love the crown, and I love Steve up there. This might be the best wig that I've ever styled. It's done! Okay, I said I would have a mic the next time you saw me, but it's the same day. I do still need to paint on that red ink-like pattern that's on orange skin, and I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet. But since the arms and legs are pretty much going to be entirely covered by armor, I'm going to use that as like my practice section so that way I can try different techniques and different types of paints. Other thing I need to do to make this bodysuit fit me better is... Think. So this is going to be a booby cup and just hear me out. <laughs> as you can see, when you wear a bodysuit over some boobies, it just makes like one uniboob, right? Like, this is just flat, there's no cleavage. But in Orin's design, she clearly has two titties because she's not wearing a bodysuit. That's her skin. And I found a technique by Alice and Tabitha um, where she wears a bodysuit with warbler booby cups underneath the fabric and it makes it look more like actual two titties rather than just one big uniboob. So I've made these Warbla cups, one for each boob, and they're going to get glued underneath this fabric. And then I will be able to start her flesh shoot pattern. Honk, honk. It's going to be real hard to grab my own boobs in this, my armored tits. And I will link Allison Tabitha's video down below. Okay. I hope this works. Sorry that I didn't show the process of gluing the armor boobies to the inside of this fabric. I had to hold it up against my body and I can't show all of that on YouTube. Yeah, I know it looks insane, but I'm really hoping it gives the illusion of like actual flesh boobs and not uniboob. I got distracted today by building furniture, so I'm not gonna do any patterning tonight, which is what I wanted to do, but I will do all of the patterning for the whole body tomorrow. But look at the furniture I built. Look! 
Now we have more storage in the office. This is awesome. Worth it. Okay, I did actually do some testing before I went to bed last night. I tested the wiggly inky texture on orange skin. This one here at the top is fabric paint, Angelus fabric paint. And it is just a little bit too bold, I think. Um, the great thing about Angelus leather paints is that it is made for fabric. It stretches with the fabric and it doesn't like crack, but I think it's a little too dark. Other technique I tried is eyeshadow from my Lisa Frank Morphe eyeshadow palette that I got with a gift card. And what's cool is I think that's what I'm gonna do actually to my face when I need to make that inky texture. When I do my actual makeup is use eyeshadow. So that might match really well. It stretches with the fabric and it doesn't seem to be rubbing off, which is what I was worried about with the eyeshadow, that it would just rub off. This is what I'm gonna do to the rest of the bodysuit. I am very loosely following the game render as my reference. It's mostly about getting the correct flow and vibes of the red inky texture, but it doesn't have to be exact. Keep in mind that if you are using eyeshadow to paint texture onto fabric, it will wash out. This bodysuit is gonna have armor glued onto it later, so I can't just throw it in the wash anyways, but you'll have to find alternate ways of cleaning your costumes if you use this method. I mostly just used the bright cherry red color, but I did go in with black eyeshadow as well to create an extra dimension to those swirls. Of course, most of this fabric is gonna be covered up by the armor later, so I don't actually have to do the whole bodysuit, but it is helpful to cover more than you think you're going to need. It would be a pain to go back in and add any places that you missed. I had a special visitor keeping me company on this day. He's such a good boy. All right, first of all, the bodysuit is done. Second of all, check out what I got. So all the alterations for this bodysuit are now finished and I get to actually start patterning her flesh armor. I'm really nervous about it. <laughs> How do I sound by the way? Do you like the mic? I feel like I don't have to shout now. I hope this is picking me up and it sounds all right. I don't actually know if I should pattern the armor right now because I'm feeling really bloated <laughs> and this has to be pretty skin tight armor. <laughs> We're gonna go with the classic cosplayer method, cling wrap and duct tape, because it never fails. All right, time to turn myself into a sausage again. See what I mean about cling wrap? Cling wrap companies, if you're watching this, us cosplayers are your biggest fans and I go through like 10 boxes a year, so you should totally just sponsor me already. Got millions of dollars and just say, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna open a studio and just make a Lord of the Rings movie for just for myself. Just for you? The one you wanted to see? Where yeah. Aragorn and Legolas fuck? Sorry, yeah. Gimli and Legolas. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> Since I can't reach my own back, I did have my spouse draw a line from my booty crack up my spine and to my neck so that I knew where the middle of this pattern piece would be. Then he drew a very rough silhouette of the back piece so I could clean it up later after taking this off. I could draw on all the front pieces by myself though. Since this design is symmetrical, I only had to draw on one half of my body. There's a lot of anxiety before starting this process, but I found that once I got going, it was actually pretty fun and easy. I gotta have more faith in myself when drawing pattern pieces. I usually get it right. I've got the skills for eyeballing these weird shapes. Then I freed myself from the duct tape prison and sectioned out these pieces into booby cups, upper chest, lower abdomen, and back. Having them as separate pieces instead of one big connected piece of armor will make it a lot easier for me to actually move around once it's on my body. Having them connected to the stretchy fabric will mean that there's a little give in between these armor pieces. I have my first patterns to start this armor finally. I basically took all that duct tape off my body, cut it out, and then transferred it on to some nice flat paper, which makes it easier to trace onto the foam. The weather forecast in Los Angeles is this. And I don't know if you know anything about LA, but that is 
not normal. But a week's worth of rain is actually perfectly okay right now because I get to just sit inside and work on the foam craft and the sculpting for all the little details on orange flesh, orange? Orin's flesh suit. So yes, this project is going to have a lot of sculpting because if you look up close to Orin's outfit, it's got a lot of organic, schmuzzly little bumps and details and blah 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 because it's meant to be like gross, disgusting, rotting flesh. What I am going to do to achieve that look is sculpt those textures out of foam clay. I'm gonna get these pieces cut out of UVA foam and just start sculpting. Once all the torso pieces have been assembled, I get into adding all those gross details for her flesh. Because I think this is made out of flesh? Or crabs? I don't know. My main tools for this are my fingers, but I do also go in with some silicone sculpting tools. I have raved about foam clay on this channel before, and even earlier in this very video, but let me do it again. I love foam clay! This shit is a game changer! It is so easy to work with and it acts just like regular EVA foam. I want to use it for everything. It doesn't require anything other than water to get working. You don't even need glue. It sticks right to EVA foam and to Warbla. Just like the red squigglies on the bodysuit, I'm not following the reference exactly, although I am trying to keep roughly the same shapes and directions of all this little detail. Mostly I'm piling up my clay along the edges and then sloping them down on one side. One repeated bit of added texture is to make teeny tiny little balls of clay and they almost look like little pimples. <laughs> The white line that you see in the middle of this torso piece is called quick seal. It's a bathroom and tile caulking. It's great for smoothing out seams in your foam armor and it's a little easier to get flat than foam clay is. This process was so relaxing. I could sculpt these gross fleshy details all day long, but I'm not going to because I have a costume to finish and a convention to attend. edges of this EVA foam have a really nice crisp 90 degree angle, and I don't want that. This is supposed to be gross yucky flesh. I gotta make those edges less clean, so I went at it with my soldering iron. It's super easy to melt the foam into like a gross texture. But make sure to wear a respirator because these fumes are toxic. And look how much better those edges look after being soldered. The one thing I really love about organic textures like this is that it's actually pretty hard to mess up because it's meant to look kind of nasty. I can throw around as much texture and bumps and carve as much as I want and it'll still look pretty accurate in the end. Ayo, hey, what's up? I have become duct tape sausage again.
Orin's armor goes all the way from shoulder to wrist and covers her entire elbow. And realistically, making this out of foam uh, is not really possible. <laughs> so if I try to make Orin's armor accurately to the design, I will be flapping my little arms around the convention center like this because I won't be able to bend them at the elbow. <laughs> So I have to separate it from upper arm to lower arm. And I'm going to try and do that sort of organically along the design so it's not just like a straight cut. And then with the fabric bodysuit, I am going to try and sort of paint the fabric that is going to be showing through at my elbow to mimic the armor. It's not gonna be 100% accurate, but I'm going to try and keep the spirit of the design. I'm gonna go ahead and draw on the design onto my arm so I can get out of my sausage prison. Design is drawn and I have made sure to add arrows and registration marks to understand how these pieces curve around and connect. Because even with the help, these patterns did still confuse me later. Orin's forearms have spikes. They're just more pieces of two millimeter EVA foam and then I use the foam clay to blend them into the rest of the armor. So it kind of looks like they're growing out of her skin instead of just looking glued down. A technique that I discovered on accident while playing with all these gross textures was to use a pot of expired foam clay. It was all wet and sticky and I couldn't sculpt with it normally, but it was great for just smearing over the surface of this foam for an easy organic texture. All right, my friends, we are on the last leg of patterning, pun intended because it's time to pattern the legs. And, but, because Orin's got armored booty cheeks. My spouse isn't home today, so I do have to draw this pattern on to my butt cheeks and the back of my legs myself. I uh, haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna do that yet. And you might be asking yourself, Katie, if her butt is gonna have armor on it, how are you actually going to sit down in this cosplay? Uh... <laughs> I probably won't. I don't know, we'll see. The plan that I have for priming and painting, I should be able to bend and squish and sit on this armor as much as I want without completely ruining it. All right, hot stuff, let's go. Welcome to the second most embarrassing and unflattering thing I have ever done for cosplay crafting. Drawing on my own ass. <laughs> don't worry, the first most embarrassing thing is coming up soon. <laughs> More patterns, more foam shapes, more clay sculpting. You know the drill at this point. Everything has been built and I get to move on to the painting and the attaching. But let me just tell you, I am so happy with how these pieces are turning out so far. There are, I think, five days until I leave for Katsukan, and I've actually finished all of the sculpting on Orin's flesh armor. And then I get to move right on to priming with Flex Bond. And usually I use Placidip and spray it because it's a little bit faster, but with Flex Bond, I can actually paint on even more texture to these gross little flesh pieces. I hear a lot of cosplayers actually prefer Flex Bond over Plasti Dip, and I haven't given this much of a chance, so we'll see if I like it better. And then I'll probably get to painting tomorrow. I'm actually really looking forward to painting because once that first layer of like rust red is down, I get to go in and add so much little detail with little paintbrushes, and I think that's gonna be really fun. I'm still gonna try to finish in time for Katsukan, although I won't be like crunching overnight or anything. I am too old for that at this point. <laughs> I can't believe I can see the finish line already. This is really exciting. How are your Baldur's Gate playthroughs going, by the way? How many times have you beaten the game? I'm currently trying to play a Dark Urge game. Um, I did try Honor Mode 
like four different times and I couldn't get past the goblin camp every time. So I gave up on honor mode. <laughs> My first tab, Romance to Starion, because I'm predictable. And I think my second Dark Urge tab is going to be romancing Minthara. And I also have a multiplayer game with my friend Damaris, where I play a slutty pink wizard who doesn't know how to read. <laughs> Talking about Baldur's Gate has made me want to play Baldur's Gate, but instead I'm going to craft. I'm diluting the Flix Bomb with a little bit of water here, before I paint it on so that there's less obvious brush strokes in the final primer. All of my armor pieces got three coats of this primer before they were ready for paint. One thing I actually completely forgot to make were these little star details on the front of Orn's chest, so I quickly sculpted those with Warbla. So there's like a chain hanging in between Orin's boobies, and I don't know what I'm going to do for that. Like shape Warbla over the chain and then leave some parts without Orbla, so it still has the links. Hmm. And that's exactly what I did. Adding strips of Warbla wrapped around this chain, but leaving links in between so that it would still hang and swing around. All of these Warbla pieces are getting the same treatment as the crown and the belt, silver rub and buff, and then some dark wash on top. And while I was at it, I just went ahead and finished the paint job on all of my belt pieces. I normally like to do all of my painting at one time. That way I can make sure my technique matches throughout the rest of the costume and then all my pieces match. I looked up how long it takes for the flex bond to cure fully and the internet told me seven days. And I leave for Katsukan in four days. So I'm going to ignore that number and just do what I want. <laughs> and hope it turns out okay. I'll try to give these a couple coats of spray paint before the sun goes down tonight. And just keep plugging away at putting this thing together. The thing that I'm actually kind of terrified of is attaching these to the fabric bodysuit. Because that's when all of this hard work could be for nothing if it doesn't fit if it doesn't like actually go on my body and I can't wear it properly. So, um, you know, wish me luck. It's Sunday and I leave for Katsukan on Thursday. My spouse came in here while I had all these pieces lying on the ground and they got so excited about seeing it come together and they basically <laughs> started bullying me into working harder, being like, whatever it takes, get it done for Katsukan, whatever it takes. <laughs> I just want to be the chosen of ball. I'm wasting time again. <laughs> Don't forget to cover your painting area in like a tarp or something to help prevent overspray. I do this on my balcony, but there's no way I'm getting my security deposit back. I am so happy with how this paint job is turning out so far. Oh my gosh. Look at all of those details, all of that texture that you can see. Like, it turned out even better than I expected. Just painting these pieces red isn't good enough. There is a huge variation in shades on Oren's outfit. There's veins and spots and gradients and all that. So I mixed up different shades of red and blood orange and pale sickly yellow with my Angelus leather paints and I went to town on this armor. My main technique for painting was mostly just to use a dabbing motion with a paper towel and my fingers. I think it would have worked great with an airbrush as well, but there's something just so pleasing and fun about finger painting. I added all of the lighter shades in first, building up from that red base to the orangey yellowish gradient. Then I went in with a smaller brush and painted in black details for even more depth. Seriously, this is a huge difference to just having all one shade of red. I love how gross this paint job came out. Don't be discouraged if you don't have fancy paints or fancy tools. If I can achieve this with my fingers and a paper towel, then you can too. It just takes practice. 
Plus, like I mentioned before, organic shapes and textures leaves a lot of room for playing around. Can you just tell the people anything? <laughs> it's Tuesday morning, and look how much I got done last night. I am so happy with this paint job. It turned out even better than I could have ever imagined. I'm extremely stoked about this. But I'm not done yet, I do still have four more pieces to paint, and I'm going to do that ASAP. Right now it's Tuesday morning, and I am leaving for KatsuCon at 6 a.m. on Thursday. So I have all of today and half of tomorrow, Wednesday, because I promised my friends I would get dinner with them. <laughs> and here's what I have to do by Wednesday night. Finish painting, add a glossy top coat, attach everything to the bodysuit, buy face paint that matches the shade of the bodysuit, dye white gloves to match the bodysuit, add the red squigglies to those gloves, add nails to those gloves, add shoes to the bottom of the bodysuit, assemble the entire belt, and then she's done. All right, since I have so much shit to do today, I am just going to shut up and go do it now. The downside to the extra layer of paint is that the armor has totally lost its original shiny glossy look, but I can just add that back in with some glossy Mod Podge as my top coat. Now this armor looks gross and wet and disgusting. I adore it. Quick break to walk the doggy and pick up the gray face paint before I get back to work. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, but I am once again covered in saran wrap, but for very good reason. I'm going to be attaching these armor pieces directly onto the bodysuit while I'm wearing it so that they are exactly where I want them to rest. That glue will certainly leak through this fabric and glue onto my skin. And I don't really want to deal with that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start with the legs. I'll be able to do every piece except for the back because I can't see there. <laughs> my spouse doesn't come home until like 8 p.m. tonight though, after a very long day. And I'm not gonna make them deal with me that late at night. <laughs> and here's the thing, I have to zip this costume up in the back so I can't just cover it in foam. I won't be able to get this bodysuit over my body. I will have either magnets or Velcro and it will just go onto my back once I'm all zipped up. It makes sense in my head. Oh, and my hair is in a wig cap because I don't want to accidentally get glue in my hair again. If this looks uncomfortable and annoying, you are correct. I was uncomfortable and annoyed. And the E6000 that I decided to work with wasn't drying fast enough. And I knew I could not hold this position and wait for it to be glued. So I had to change tactics. I changed my mind. I am actually going to use contact cement. It works, it works great. Downside, it's a little messier and harder to control. Upside, I will actually get this finished today and it will cure immediately. Contact cement is a savior for cosplay, along with cling wrap. It holds onto this foam and fabric so well, and I wasn't worried at all about my armor falling off. The biggest struggle of attaching pieces was making certain they were where I wanted, and the uncomfortable positions I had to contort myself into to reach the armor, and the fact that I was slowly running out of contact cement at this point, and I could tell my pot was getting dried up near the end of this process. I just had to hope and pray it held out for the rest of this costume. Look what happens to my torso when I sit down in this bodysuit. I get, um, I'm wearing a corset underneath this by the way, but I get pretty, I get pretty like smudged up here. Like the corset bones kind of like start to fold and it doesn't really hold me nice and flat. <laughs> so I'm rethinking that idea of attaching the torso piece permanently, the one that goes from the ribs to the cooter. I think I can attach the boobs and the chest piece okay, cause like those aren't getting like smooshed around. 
I think that for the torso piece and the back piece, those are going to have to be attached while I'm standing up. And I will have to keep them unattached while I'm like sitting or traveling. And now I just have to think about how I want to attach those. <sighs> Upside though is that this glue does appear to be working really well. Um, I don't see anything peeling off right now. All right, your girl's gonna huff some more glue <laughs> and suffer. To make sure I was confident in my placement of the chest piece and the booby cups, I held them up to my body in the mirror and made little dots with red sharpie. I made sure to put the dots just underneath where the armor would sit so it doesn't show up on the suit once they're actually glued down. You could also use a heat erase pen if you have it. Maybe I should get a heat erase pen. This probably would have been a lot easier with one of those. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 it's looking good. For the lower torso, I use the same technique with the red Sharpie, but this time I'm marking where the armor goes so that I know where to glue down my Velcro for attaching it later. The Velcro is spaced out along the edges of this armor piece, making sure to also get any areas that stick out. Okay, she's starting to come together. Can you tell I'm feeling real good about this? Drawing on my own butt might have been the second most embarrassing and unflattering thing I've ever done for cosplay. But gluing on my own butt takes first place. God, that looks so awful. Why is this what I have to go through to get armored booty cheeks? Why does Orin have spooky flesh armor on her ass? This butt piece does look like a crab though. Crab rave. And I did a quick test to make sure I can still sit in this crab butt. Success! The upper and lower arm pieces are attached the same way as the rest of the suit. But Orin's arms are red all the way down and my elbow is gray from the fabric. So I break open my Angelus leather paints again and I just paint directly onto the fabric while I'm wearing it. and I get to do a test fit with all of my flesh armor finished. I'm so stoked. It's actually coming together with less than a day left on the clock. It's Valentine's Day. I have dinner plans with my friends tonight so we can celebrate our love for each other. And then I have to pack all these costumes and fly out for Katsukan at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. So it is the last day I have to work on Oren, which means for the most part, I'm just gonna shut up and get to work, and you will hear from me through the magic of editing. With support from Elle Woods and my comfort movie, Legally Blonde, I am jumping into assembling Orin's belt. I had the genius idea to attach all these O-rings with my UV resin. That way they're super secure, and I can clip the belt together with pliers and Hopefully, not worry about these belt pieces snapping off. I place my rings carefully in a dollop of resin and then blast it with that flashlight for a minute or so, slowly making the belt longer and then trying it on occasionally to make sure it fits. The whole thing attaches with the clasp in the back. I use the same UV resin technique to make the hanging pieces with a little silver chain and all those little circles I made earlier. These will also attach to the front of the belt later with clasps. I'm waiting for this water to boil so that I can attempt to dye these white gloves a shade of light gray in order for it to match the same shade as my gray bodysuit. And all I gotta do is use very, very little 
of this black dye. Then after the gloves have been dyed and dried, I am going to once again give it the swirly red pattern with some red eyeshadow. And I'm also going to be attaching some fake nails to the gloves. While waiting for the water to boil, I'm also going to viciously rip apart these shoes and separate the rubber bottom so that it can become the bottom of the shoe for the bodysuit. RIP these shoes, but thanks for your sacrifice. Your rubber bottom was very useful. I later attached them to the bodysuit feet while I was wearing it with hot glue. And I also accidentally glued the sock that I was wearing to the inside of the suit. So that's just there forever now. So in order to know where to put the Velcro for the back piece of this suit, I had my spouse actually just use a Sharpie and very carefully dot along the inside of the piece so that way when I take this off, I know where to put my Velcro. I also just ran out of contact cement. So we are just going to hope and pray that hot glue is good enough. And the other thing I did was glue on some shoe bottoms. Uh, but now I actually have to take off my beef jerky suit and put on something cuter to meet my friend for dinner. Miraculously, I am on the last steps. After a great dinner with friends, I'm adding the Velcro to the back piece, I'm adding the fingernails to the gloves, and with a couple of hours to spare, I finished Oren for Katsukan. from Katsukan 2024, and I had an excellent time. I got to hang out with wonderful people. I got reconnected from friends from out of town. I saw some of the best cosplay I have ever seen in my life. I had a blast wearing Orin, and I even, I won an award. I entered Orin into the Hall Cosplay Contest at Katsukan. It's a cosplay contest where you can just walk up and apply. The only downside is it's first come, first serve, so once they fill up, they fill up. But you just walk up and they give you time to come back and get judged. They judged my Orin, and then I got a, a Judge's Choice Award. I really didn't expect this, and I'm extremely happy about it. And now I have something to hang up that proves I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> of course, when you bring a handmade cosplay to a convention, you always risk something breaking. And Orange sure did break. <laughs> um, Steve fell off of her headpiece in my luggage, <laughs> so I'll have to glue that back on. The belt snapped entirely, so the UV resin I used to connect those pieces doesn't really work. But I was prepared for this. And the good news is, I know how to fix it. My photo and video shoot for Orin is scheduled a week from now. I'm gonna take the time to fix her up and finally get started on that dagger that I've been putting off. All righty, let's fix up these pieces and get through that dagger real quick so I can be ready for the photo shoot. The UV resin that I used to attach these O-rings to the belt was not stable enough and ended up snapping pretty easily at the convention. Not too much of a bummer because I do have extra pieces and I know how to fix her. This time I sandwiched the O-rings between the belt piece and another piece of EVA foam with some contact cement. Our favorite little man Steve got reattached with contact cement as well. Before I even left for Katsu, I did make all these extra little shapes out of foam clay to attach the fabric at my elbow, but I just never got around to it. And now I can. This should add even more gross texture to the fabric that matches the foam armor on my upper and lower arms. The dagger bloodthirst looks really cool and it's gonna be really easy to make. I start with the hilt. It's a leftover piece of PVC pipe from a previous project and I've just roughly measured it to the shape of my hand. I ended up sketching out the pattern for Orin's dagger, but it would be easier to just print it out to scale.
I wanted to flatten this PVC pipe hilt, so I heated it up while wearing a respirator and smushed it with a big shelf that I never put up. I just stood on it while it was hot. Once I have these pattern pieces separate, I can start building the dagger from EVA foam. I got to break out the foam clay again and make these little teeth-like details that go at the bottom of the hilt and on the inside of the dagger. I also made that little teardrop shape that repeats a bunch, and I'll be making another silicone mold for those so I can cast them out of resin. I dremeled down the blade of this dagger along with some of the other pieces that just had kind of a rough cut to them. Anytime I have to dremel a circle shape like this, I always end up flinging it all over the place. <laughs> and again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> You'd think I would learn to hold on to it by now. After assembling the base of this dagger, I start adding those organic textures again. One day later and my little foam clay shapes have dried, so I can get to gluing on those little teeth shapes and I can start building the mold box for the silicone. My silicone mold actually did leak, and I'm kind of sad about it. I put in a lot of effort to try and make it not leak, and I failed. Um, I've currently put it on another piece of cardboard that I'm going to wrap in tape, and I'm going to hot glue down, and fingers crossed I've caught it in time, and it all doesn't leak out, and ruin my tables? <laughs> Damn it! I believe it's been... Four to six hours to let this cure. I'm gonna try to rip it apart and we're gonna really hope that this worked. <laughs> casting all my UV resin without any inks because I found that they wouldn't cure properly. But not to worry, I thought of a solution to make them red and that's just plain old nail polish. By painting the bottoms, the whole resin piece just looks like it's red. go through the same process to prime and paint this dagger as I did for the rest of Orin's armor. And yes, I know, I didn't make Orin's netherstone, I didn't forget, my only justification is that I simply didn't feel like it. <laughs> Even 
as I was wrapping up this last piece of the full costume, it didn't quite hit me that this project was finished. It wasn't a huge marathon, it didn't have any big bombastic pieces like my previous projects, but I am still pretty darn proud of the final outcome. There's something so fun about making a cosplay that's gross on purpose. I get to look fierce, but also like diseased. I'm like a flesh-covered murder crab lady. I'm really glad that I get to bring the Princess of Ball to life, and I really hope you like her. really know what to say to wrap up this project, other than, damn, I did that! <laughs> when going through the final photos from this shoot, it was looking like in-game screenshots. Like that's how good it is! I am so, so damn proud of this build! My next project is going to be another Baldur's Gate 3 cosplay. I am in deep for this game. I'm also very excited and honored to say that my next projects for the entire year are all going to be sponsored by Lumen's Workshop. They are a cosplay crafting and materials company out in Australia, and I'm just so stoked that they chose me in a recent contest that I applied to. And I'm really looking forward to getting that first package of supplies. I can just get right down into crafting Dame Malin and putting together another video for y'all. If you make an Orn cosplay with help from this video, please tag me. I want to see. Don't forget to subscribe for more cosplay videos. You can also find me on my socials to see me posting cosplay more frequently. And leave me a comment to tell me about your tabs and your favorite parts of Bald Gay. I can't believe this turned out so good. <laughs>